pie shell. The strawberry goo. Howdy folks, I am Martha and I welcome you to Hirschberger's Miracle Homestead. Well, some of you may still be dreaming of strawberries. We are blessed to have strawberries in our area of the country. So we are featuring a strawberry dish today and that's going to be strawberry pie. I'll pull you in then to go across the ingredients, but before I do that, this is what we need for the pie filling. And then over here, we need a pie crust. I do not have pie crust in the freezer. I did not buy one, so this is what we need to make our own pie crust. But there are good pie crusts out there that you can buy, and if you choose to do that, and you want to skip the pie crust making, then you can, in the timestamps, you can jump the pie crust and go straight from the making of the pie filling to assembling the pie. So I saw I throw that out there, but I'd love for you to join us as we make the pie crust as well. We do have a video on this. It was probably one of our first videos that we did, that we did on the pie crust video. And we shared a lot of memories on there about mom and her love for feeding the family and grandchildren coming and making little pies or whatever with pie dough. So we'll leave a link for that video. All right, I'm gonna pull you in and we'll go across the ingredients. The ingredients we'll need for the pie filling are sugar, and three ounces of jello, and this can be used for whatever flavor fruit you're working with. Just choose the jello to match your fruit. This is a six ounce box of jello. I only need three ounces, so I divided it out, and that's what that red is in the among the sugar is the jello we'll need for this. So we'll, for the filling, we'll need the sugar, jello, lemon juice, and here is water in the kettle already. A thickening agent, you can use cornstarch. We live close to a bulk food place where they have uh, therm flow, and that also works well. And then we need water to mix these two together for the thickening agent. Okay, the strawberries and the Cool Whip we'll not need until the very end when we are assembling everything together. So I'm gonna actually put it back in the refrigerator because it's gonna be a while. And since we're concentrating on the filling part right now, I'm just gonna slide this stuff aside and we'll pull it in when you're ready to make the pie crust. And we'll be using the hot plate, so I will pull the hot plate in, which it's a cold plate right now. <laughs> Plug it in. And before we pull in and get going with that, the water is heating up. Welcome, welcome to all our new subscribers. If you've been with us for a while, we'll welcome you back. If you're passing through, we hope you enjoy it and consider subscribing. And thanks also for those who comment and like our videos and also share it on your social media that helps our channel to grow and for that we thank you okay we'll come in and put the sugar and the jello in the water okie dokie here is the sugar and the jello dump it straight into the pot along with the lemon juice and give this a stir now with your whisk you do not have to constantly stir this while it's coming up to temp. Now for the thickening agent, I'm gonna dump my water in here, along with our thermflow. And like I say, if you don't have that, why cornstarch or some type of thickening agent will work as well. And you wanna stir this until it's all dissolved. And just because it's dissolved doesn't mean it's ready to go straight into the pot when the water there is boiling because it does have a way of settling to the bottom. So before you actually dump it in, you want to stir it again just to make sure everything is liquefied. It's starting to boil. So I'm going to turn the burner down a little bit. Let me give this a stir and get rid of my spoon. Okay, slowly pour it in. And you also want to be careful because when this gets to a thickening point, it will want to splash up at you as it's thickening. So you want to be careful. For a pie, I like for it to be a little bit thicker than for a delight. A delight I enjoy if it's a little bit thinner 
just kind of runs over the delight. Then for pie, I like that to be a little bit thicker so it stands up better. All right, I'm about to the point that I'd be careful for the popping of it. Just go and dump it all in. Give it a good whisk. Turn the burner off. See it popping? <laughs> My hand would be there, it'd be bad, sad news. Okay, get it off the heat. And it's still doing some popping. Stir it a little bit more, maybe that'll help calm it down. Now, hitting the edges only. We do have a link for this in the description box. A countertop burner, it's been very, very nice. Oh yes, that is perfect. It will thicken as it cools, it will thicken. Here we go. Into the cake pan it goes so it can cool down faster. We do not add food coloring to ours. Um, to me, this is a rich enough red for the strawberry. All right, I'm going to get this scraped out here. Now when I level it out, I'm just going to shake it a little bit so it levels out. Now we're going to take saran wrap. We're going to let it come down onto the goo. And that will help prevent a skin from forming. It's hot now and it can get real thick and crusty on the top, which we call skin, and this prevents that. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside and let it get the main temp out of it before I put it in the refrigerator, and then we'll put it in the refrigerator, let it get good and cold before we cut up strawberries to it. And this will be more than what we need for one pie, but if you have a cake, it's delicious putting strawberries to this and then put that over cake with Cool Whip. Um, or I like it just plain too with the strawberries in it. So, but if you're making two pie, then this would be perfect for two pie. All right, we are going to get cleaned up here and regroup and make the pie crust. And now for the pie crust. So the ingredients we need for the pie crust are eggs at room temperature, Crisco, salt, water, vinegar, and all-purpose flour. So we will get to mixing this up. It's a two-step process right now. I will put the Crisco in here with the flour. And I usually put the salt in before the Crisco to just mix it up a little bit with the flour, but I can do that on the side here. There we go. That was a quick fix. All right, before we move on with that, I'm going to mix the wet ingredients together. So in this one goes the water. Vinegar and the eggs. And I'm going to whip this with just a fork. All right, that looks good. Mom always did this with her hands, so we just kind of followed her pattern on this. But if you have a pastry cutter, well, that would work too. You just want to mix this up until it's a crumble. Okay. That is looking good. A nice crumble. All right. The eggs are beat up in the water and vinegar. So we will dump that in there. Now just combine this. You don't want to over mix it, but you do want it combined well. So there again, we'll just keep turning it around. Although I went from a two hand job down to one hand job. 
we're almost there. There's some, at the very bottom yet, some flour mixture. Let's get that all in. Like I say, we don't want to overwork it. And I think that looks good there. I need to get my hands washed up. All right, I am prepared with extra flour and you'll see in a minute what we're gonna do with that. Here's a pie dough, a knife and a fork, the rolling pin. We will get started and roll them out. Nice amount of flour on the countertop. Kind of roll your rolling pin in it so it can this would be mom's rolling pin. And you'll hear the noise we used to hear as youngsters. And we knew when we heard that noise that good pie was on the way. I gave this story in the original pie crust video that we have. And I thought I'd share it here. And that is back when I went to grade school. We had a teacher come in to teach from out of town. And so here was a bachelor coming in to teach and the mothers at times would make food for him and feed him and that type of thing. Mama made a pie for him and when he returned the empty pan, he told her that half the pie is a pie crust and yours was top notch. <laughs> so according to my teacher, it's top notch. Okay, we dusted the pie pan already with flour. So I just like to use plenty of flour. And get a thing of pie dough. I have to work with my fingers a little bit to get started. But you can do however. And then start in the middle and roll out, middle roll out, middle roll out, middle roll out. Middle roll out. Now I'm going to turn it. I want to make sure everything stays floured under it. That should be big enough. Now we'll pick it up, flip, pop it back and forth. And go up over the pie pan. And for the sake of the video, paper towel down to help keep it clean a little bit. There we go, I think you can see that. Just straighten up the pie crust. There's a lot of air under there. Just pick it up and press gently in. And here it flipped over a little bit, but you can flip it right back. And no worries if it doesn't come all the way out to the edge because you can just take some where it's hanging out over and put it over here. And press it in there for that to come together as one unit. I just like to go around one more time just to make sure that tucked up to the pie pan tight. No air pockets down in there. And then with your knife, just cut off the part that it did not take and hanging over. And now we'll gather this up. Now you want to put the pretties around the edge. There's different ways of doing it. We just say with a simple 
way of doing it. Nothing fancy, but it's pretty enough. You thumb in your finger and then your finger here. And press in between the thumb and the finger. I know there's other ways of doing it too, so experiment and find a way that you like. And then I just press it back up. So it's up as high as it'll go because we'll be baking an empty pie shell for the strawberry pie and it will have a tendency to shrink down in but there we go okie dokie i have the pie crust all rolled out we're going to be baking these two for the strawberry pie this is the regular size and then this is a small one and the reason we're doing two of them the small one is going to be featured for buddy he should have an overabundance of seeds so i'll be peeling some strawberries for him I'm not saying that none of the seeds are getting in, but the majority of them will be out. Oh, how many do we have here? There's three big ones that have the little handles on. Those bigger than any of the others. There's three of those. And then there's one, two, three, four, five regular size and then two small ones. So I will pull you in so you can see how we'll prepare these for the oven. It's preheated to 400. And here's where you need the fork. If you're going to put a pie filling in here that the whole pie gets baked, then you do not necessarily put holes in the pie crust. But since a cooked, cooled filling is going in here, you want a prepared pie shell for that. So we're going to take the fork and go around the edges, putting little holes in so the air that it creates can escape. Along the side as well as on the bottom. And the same way with this one. And now the bottom. And what are we going to do with the rest of the pie crust? Saran wrap. Cover it up. And this is all we do to put it in the freezer. There's many times that it came in very handy to have frozen pie crusts on hand. You could probably make a disc of pie dough and put that in the freezer. It wouldn't take up as much room. But this way the pie crust is rolled out, ready to go. You just have to get it out, thaw it out. We do have videos out on egg custard pie and then a video on doing a coconut and peanut butter pie. So we can leave links for those. Oh yes, another pie we did was a peanut butter ice cream pie, but that did not take this type of pie crust, but that took a graham cracker crust, which we bought that. The peanut butter ice cream pie was what we did in the month of March for the pie collaboration that we were part of. These pie crusts can also be used in making savory pies. We have a quiche that we made that was from the pie crust. Here we go, what a wonderful feeling for the freezer. Okay, in a few minutes we'll be checking the pie crusts in there. Let me push these to the side till we get them in the freezer. Well, the pie crusts are done, the oven is off. And once these are cooled down, we can proceed with finishing up the strawberry pie. But they have to cool down first. So, we'll see you back in a few. Okie dokie folks, we are here with one pie crust that has Buddy's pie. I went ahead and peeled the strawberries and put it in the goo and put it in here. Okay, we're just to take the berries and cut them up, put them in here, and then we will add the strawberry goo to it, or filling, whatever you want to call that. And it's, you can cut up the strawberries to whatever size suits your fancy. I told Dorothy the next strawberries 
should be real, real sweet. These are delicious. But, there's a pretty one. When the, uh, we had a lot of rain and a lot of cloud, cool weather, and that affects the sweetness of the berry. If it's a warm, sunny day, it makes for a sweeter berry. But believe you me, though, these are delicious. But I thought I'd throw that tip out there that the warmth of the sun brings sweetness to berries. Be interesting to know what some of your favorite strawberry dishes are. If you don't mind sharing in the comments, it'd be interesting to read and find out what strawberry dishes you like. I'm going to set these aside while we finish up this. Now to me, for a pie, this is a perfect texture for a delight. As I mentioned when I was making it, that for a delight, I wouldn't have added quite all the thickening. And then it wouldn't be as thick, and for a delight, I like to have it just run. And also, well, not run, run, but. And also, this is very, very delicious over a slice of pound cake. Our favorite one is a sour cream pound cake. And yes, we have a video on making the sour cream pound cake. So we can leave a link for that in the description box. I might have too much for that one pie, but that's all right. Remember, we have some more pie crusts. <laughs> all right, pie shell and the strawberry goo. You don't want to apply a lot of pressure or you'll break your pie shell. Oh my goodness, do you see that yumminess there? To me, that is gorgeous. Alrighty, folks. Benefit of being the cook, you can decide when the pie is full enough and put the rest in there and give yourself a treat. Now in comes the Cool Whip. And if you prefer whipping up cream and making homemade, why help yourself. You're more than welcome to. And I think it's pretty just to let a little sliver showing at the edge instead of covering it all up. Put it however much on you want or however little. And now what kind of pretties are we going to put on here? Just swirl it back and forth. That'll be good enough. Okay, we'll go ahead and put it on Buddies right away. I'm not used to putting pretties on pies, so I am doing my best. And there we have it, folks, a strawberry pie. Only thing left to do yet is to Dig in and enjoy. This is our first strawberry pie for the season. I was definitely excited for my first piece of pie and wanted to be sure you can see it well also. So I cut a piece too big, therefore the pie server did not fit under the whole piece of pie. Where the crust did not have the support of the pie server, it broke which in turn causes it to not look the prettiest. However, let me tell you something. It did not affect the taste whatsoever. It is so, so good, and I can highly recommend making yourself one. Thanks again for joining me in the kitchen as we made the strawberry pie. You'll find the recipe in the description box. And now for the golden thought. Howdy folks and welcome to the golden thought of this episode. I'm Martha and I'm here with my twin brother Marvin who's better known as Buddy. The golden thought for today. I don't want to be a Christian who appears to have a perfect life. 
I am a sinner. I am broken. I struggle. And I have fallen more times than I am willing to admit. That's why I need my Jesus. Jesus came to save me as a sinner. He came to heal a broken heart. He came to give strength when I struggle. And he came to pick me up when I've fallen down. And that's why we need our Jesus. He's very, very special. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. We hope you've been blessed, encouraged, and inspired. With that, we'll bring it to a close. Thank you and God bless.